again. Um, I really enjoyed doing the writer's community bedtime story yesterday and today I have roped in my spectacular mum to do uh, the first chapter of her new book. It's coming out on the 13th of April as an ebook and a paperback and it will be available from our shop as an ebook and from Amazon as a paperback and hopefully in other stores uh, as time goes on. So here's Susan Crow, my mum. Now, she's written two other books before. The first one, Child of the Isle, is her memoir of growing up in the Isle of Axome during the 50s and 60s. Um, the second one, Rosie Jane, Jane and the Swatchbump, was a fantastic uh, children's story in rhyme that she launched at a local primary school as part of the John O'Groats Book Festival. Now, the new book, Child of the Earth, is a companion to Child of the Isle. It focuses entirely on nature writing because the natural world is something that's incredibly important to my spectacular mum. <laughs> <laughs> now I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong with this, I believe that Child of the Earth has drawn the inspiration from the three main places that mum has lived. That is in the Isle of Axel, in Orkney and here in Caithness. Now the chapter that she's going to read for you today is the introduction to it. It is called Whispers of Wild Things. And what, what we've done with this is it goes through the year. So after the introduction, there's a chapter on January, then February, then March, until you get to December. And then there's a conclusion at the end as well. It's a brilliant book. Please um, check it out on our website, um, which we will link below and on the Amazon page as well. So I'm going to hand over now to Mum who's going to read you the introduction for her book. Hi. The strangest thing is that I didn't know it was nature. I lived each day incidentally learning about the reality around me but I didn't recognise it as the study of nature. The good earth and the profound heavens were, are, certain. We can mess up big time and scar or denude great swathes of our natural heritage, but that is all we have. After the orgy, someone must clear up and make things right again. I'm not a mountaineer, but I have wondered at the haunting, some say haunted, wilderness that is Ben McDewey in the Cairngorms. Set Polly is reminiscent of the setting for an old western film. These gracious majesties are stunners. It is, however, the everyday nature which has formed me. The influx of ladybirds in that glorious summer of 1976 and ice patterns on the windows of my childhood are my nature. I have looked at, listened to, sniffed and felt the world around me. From a very early age, I knew I should be careful about what to taste. I've missed some things, we always do, but I've kept inside me so many of the wonders which have simply been there in my life. I sincerely hope you'll enjoy reading my nature story and I wish through this book that you and I may be friends and friends of nature. Nature needs all possible friends available right now. Once upon a time, a little girl lived with her mummy and daddy and baby brother in a Lincolnshire backwater, literally a backwater. The Isle of Axholme was marshy and ecologically crammed with riches. The Dutch engineers came in the 17th century and drained the marshes. This meant that local people could no longer work with the familiar ecosystem in order to survive. Everything had changed. The land was rich and fertile, but the people struggled with this new way of life. They moved on, and in the mid 20th century, the little girl played along the old meers and hedgerows, the becks and embankments, down the turberies and on the old common land between the villages. The little girl was me. I loved my home in the top corner of the Lincolnshire Fenlands. From the first time I noticed animal footprints in the snow, 
and leaf-parceled hedgehogs in winter hibernation until now, when I return and thrill to see the ribbons of hawthorn lace which trim the dyke sides in late spring. As a student in Yorkshire, I saw a different beauty in rolling hills dotted with sheep, ivy-clad woodlands, the seashore where some of my ancestors had lived and worked as coast guards, and the estuary where Queen Elizabeth II later opened a single-span suspension bridge in 1981. Three of our children had the Isle of Axholme as their playground before we moved with their baby sister to Orkney in 1986. How life changed then. Scapa Flow, the Atlantic Ocean and the North Sea wrapped themselves around us like soothing silk and when the waters were churning in the frequent storms they whispered stories of lives lived which we should never forget. Orcadians lived by farming first and fishing. Shetlanders lived by fishing first and farming. Both archipelagos test the health and strength of those who keep the old ways alive. There was a great deal of learning to be done. The children came home from school and taught us the history and customs of their new playground. As a family, we discovered wonders. When we returned to Lincolnshire, we had six children. We didn't find the two younger uh, children amongst the Neolithic stones and cairns, but like their brother and sisters, they have them etched inside somehow. In North Lincolnshire, we adjusted to the very different and by now changed way of life. Much had happened to the countryside in the years before our return, but the walks were still to be enjoyed. Badgers, foxes and smaller mammals are still out there. We caught sight of a badger at dawn, came face to face with a fox cub on a bike ride and were startled by a kingfisher darting through trees on the south bank of the Humber. We finally came back to northern Scotland. Caithness is sometimes described as the lowlands beyond the highlands. I'm glad that we are obliged to travel down the North Sea coast to get to Inverness, which is our city, over 100 miles away. The roads are generally good, but the journey requires careful driving and some stretches are best avoided in bad weather. It is heavenly to drive through a sunrise as we keep the sea on our left and later to catch glimpses of the sun setting to the west as we head homeward. If we take the train, we are still able to keep the sunrise in our sights part of the way and we lose count of the deer. Cormorants and shags with their dolman sleeves bask on the rocks at Helmsdale and lambs do their Zebedee impressions as we whistle by. As I write, the last ashes of logs are dropping in the grate. The man and the dog are sleeping with whispers of the day past and a tawny owl softly hoots for me. When I no longer acknowledge these with quiet gratitude, I will have forgotten all that nature has taught me. I owe it. That was absolutely fantastic. I don't Thank think you, you could tell that mum was a little bit nervous about reading that. Because <laughs> it was so brilliant. Now, I think you probably realised from that first chapter that mum has this astonishing ability to make her writing, her prose writing, as though she's reading a poem. <laughs> the language she uses is poetical, it is stunning. Now I didn't tell you that to begin with because I knew you would um, work it out when you actually heard her reading it. Um, so thank you so much mum for sharing that with us. You're very welcome, you say the nicest things. <laughs> <laughs> now before we finish, um, do you want to nominate anyone who has published a book who you know is on Twitter? Uh, yes, I'd like to nominate Clemency's brother, uh, my son, Alexander, uh, Alex Crow, who's just published his uh, novella. Okay, super duper. So until next time, folks, thank you. Bye.